Despite an iconic design format and intriguing military history, Panerai is a brand that splits the enthusiast community right down the middle. About a decade ago, Panerai was easily one of the hottest watch brands on earth. But now the tune around the brand is polarizing to say the least. So what I wanted to do in this video is address Panerai from a high level by looking at two examples that I think represent their most popular formats, discussing their storied history, and finally, where I see Panerai currently residing within the watch world, contrasting the good and the bad. Let's jump into it. Now, before we discuss Panerai, check out one of our latest blogs looking at some of the best watches under $5,000. Over 40 watches mentioned and updated newly for 2021. Check it out, will be in the description down below. In contrast to much of the watch industry, Panerai's history is distinctly Italian, with the name dating back to 1860, when watchmaker Giovanni Panerai opened a humble watch and clock shop in the heart of Florence, Italy. After providing technical instruments to the Royal Italian Navy, Panerai created a luminescent radium powder, officially named Radiomir, in 1915 for the use in military gun sites, an innovation that would help to shape the brand going forward. In the mid to late 1930s, Panerai supplied prototype water-resistant Radiomir watches, actually produced by Rolex with luminous dials made in Panerai's workshop to a new Italian Navy Maritime Special Forces unit. The watches were unlike anything seen before at the time with an enormous 47 millimeter case, sandwich dial construction to allow for more luminescent material and a long treated leather strap intended for wear over diving suits. When Italy entered World War II, Italian underwater commandos utilized Panerai watches in their synchronized attacks. And after the war, Panerai's relationship with the Italian Navy continued a collaboration that led to Panerai's other icon, the Luminor, named for a safer, less radioactive luminescent material compared to radium, with its distinctive crown guards being added shortly thereafter. In 1970, as more innovative, capable, and inexpensive dive watches began to flood the market, Panerai seized its supply to the Italian Navy, with the brand existing in relative obscurity until 1993 when Panerai opted to put its former military models on the civilian market, where they would have a huge impact on the sizing norms of the time. Shortly after, cameos on the wrist of both Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger drove demand for Panerai to incredible heights, with them being acquired in 1997 and now being under the operation of Richemont. In the early 2000s, Panerai benefited massively from exposure in the media as well as the industry-wide larger watch trend they helped create. With many Panerai models selling out before hitting the display case, much like the Rolex sports watches in the present day. In 2005, Panerai revealed the first in a now wide collection of in-house calibers, an answer to a rapidly growing trend at the time. And today, while the Panerai craze has largely cooled, the brand has leaned into more modern dimensions while also continuing to pursue continued growth with their movements. But before we identify the playing field for modern Panerai, Let's begin with taking a look at the 47 millimeter Radiomir PAM 425, as well as the Luminor Marina PAM 1312. Digging into our overview portion and going in historically accurate order, we'll start with the PAM 425, essentially a modern reproduction of the rare prototype reference, the 2533, with a distinctive dial design Panerai calls the SLC, an abbreviation for the Italian of slow moving torpedo. The 425 is true to the original watch's dimensions as well, with a 47 millimeter case and architecture calling back to the original 1936 prototype, wearing nearly every bit of its size. While this will be a tough wear for some, this reference is intended for purists who want something as close as possible to the original. Measuring at 51.6 millimeters in terms of its lug to lug and 16.2 millimeters thick, the cushion case style is equipped with wired lugs, a well executed 26 millimeter leather strap, and overall polished surfaces across the entire case, as well as the screw down onion style crown that again mimics the earliest radio mirrors. The example we photographed was well worn, giving an accurate depiction of how this polished execution will age over time. And if you're less of a historical purist in terms of wearing dimensions. The Radiomir style case is also available in a variety of options, including a 42 and 45 millimeter versions. 
Gazing through a thick box section sapphire crystal, we take up view of an understated dial. Defined by its loom-filled baton and dot indices, which also feature Panerai's signature sandwich style construction, this dial is incredibly minimal, clearly demonstrating its intended military use case. Though interestingly, this design was rejected by the Italian Navy at the prototype stage for not allowing enough visible luminescent material, though this modern example glows well in practice. Beyond the indices and copper-colored loom-filled hands, and an oversized signature at noon, the dial is one of the most minimal offered from the brand, with this version omitting the tiny imprint of the two divers riding an SLC. Like the original watches, this modern PAM 425 leans into pocket watch style hand winding calibers, in this case with the P3000, originally unveiled by Panerai in 2011. The P3000 is composed of 161 individual components with 21 jewels, a free sprung balance positioned between a pair of oversized screws on on the bridge, polished edges to the bridges, and two barrels enabling a solid power reserve of three days. The watch also has a distinct setting, so there's no quick set date, but it does have a bi-directional function of a hour hand that can be isolated at that second position, which will be really useful for travel. In terms of general operation, we're looking at 21,600 vibrations per hour, three hertz, and has a power reserve of 72 hours. But moving from the radio mirror, let's now look at the other pillar within Panerai's offering, the Luminor. Compared to the more traditional sizing and visual design of the 425, the Luminor Marina is demonstrative of Panerai's modern take on the original 1955 Luminor, featuring the appearance of this signature crown guard. This reference here is the PAM 1312 with an adapted case size from the original model, here executed in a slightly more wearable 44 millimeter diameter, paired with a 53.5 millimeter lug to lug and a 15.5 millimeter thickness. As will be the theme for many Panerai watches, this one is substantial in its stature as well. But of the two examples, this is easily the more wearable option. Looking across Panerai's collection, 44 millimeters seems to be the most popular case size, keeping the oversized feel of the originals without overpowering even larger wrists. And the Luminor and the submersible collections are the areas with the most variety in terms of case size. For case finishing, the Luminor is polished on the prominent square lugs at 24 millimeters, the bezel, with linear brushing on the outside of the crown guard at three, as well on the screw down closed case back. The crown guards are easily the defining characteristic of the case, featuring the locking mechanism that releases from the crown in order to operate in a standard manner from there. The 1312 offers what is perhaps the most popular modern Panerai dial format with an adapted version of the original Luminor, featuring prominent recessed loom Arabic markers at 12, 3, 6, and 9, baton-shaped markings in between, a simple date window at 3, and a subtle small seconds register just across the dial near the 9 o'clock index. Dial text is again oversized and more prevalent in this design, though legibility is solid as long as you aren't tracking precise minutes as neither of these Panerai variations offers a minute track. Loom pencil style hands work in tandem with the indices to offer a bright luminescent display in reduced lighting conditions, which is about the least this watch could do with a name like the Luminor. Again, offering a more modern take on the design formula, the 1312 leans into an automatic caliber for the P9010. Lurking behind a simple adorned case back, the P9010 is one of the standard in-house automatic calibers built from 200 components and is equipped with 31 joules, a free sprung balance with much of the same perks as the P3000. However, the beat frequency does jump to four Hertz in this instance while maintaining that 72 hours of power reserve from a double barrel design. So with the jump Hertz up to 28,800 vibrations per hour, it still does feature hacking and hand winding. And also again, that power reserve still being on par as the previous radio mirror. And as a note, both the radio mirror and the Luminor case formats are also available and significantly less expensive variants equipped with third-party calibers, with those starting with options around $5,000. But now looking at these two variants from both of these kind of distinguished lines, let's discuss Panerai a bit more. Now, what I really wanted to do, and I get a ton of questions about Panerai, like what are my thoughts? What do I think about the brand? As somebody who comes from an Italian background, I've always just been a bit interested in Panerai. Of course, with a smaller wrist, I have a difficulty with pulling a lot of them off. But what I really wanted to do here is look at this kind of as like a case study because Panerai as a brand is an interesting one. And as you're looking at other brands out there, they've kind of experienced a lot of highs and lows and where people see the brand now is kind of down, but I think there's still some intriguing things that the brand has to offer. And sometimes they're a little bit, I would say almost overlooked in some aspect, uh, just kind of considering what they've kind of gone through in the past 10 to 15 years. But let's first discuss why some people have some negative types of ideas around this brand and then also look at the positives and then kind of go from there. 
Now to start us off here looking at Panerai and one of the challenges I think currently facing the brand is how heavily invested they were in just kind of creating the same design format and really building off of the norm that was the 2000s and the late 1990s, kind of that bling era. And that has pretty much long gone and you've seen a lot of brands that are now kind of transitioning away from this. I mean, you have the likes of Breitling, IWC, Frank Muller. They really made a lot of larger watches and this was a huge benefit to these brands and allowing them to double down. And since size is such a huge part of Panerai's DNA, as kind of the interests have shifted to smaller case sizes, I would say just generally, that has really left a bigger dent when you're looking at a brand like Panerai. Another thing I've noticed with Panerai is there's an overwhelming number of models with subtle differences. Their collections are tight in their spread, but the amount of Panerai references with small changes makes it difficult for a newcomer to understand the differences and prevents a reference from really taking off as a definitive icon. Most brands, if you look around, although they might have a ton of references, you still can really see that one that kind of takes off and is a leader for the brand. Because of the overlap, it kind of hurts Panerai's cause. Another challenge for Panerai that I have just noticed and why people sometimes are critical of the brand are just different controversies, mostly around fakes and social media. Now, given the execution of Panerai's minimal sandwich dial designs and usually having their calibers covered up by a closed case back, this has opened up counterfeit watches to be done in an easier manner. And with fakes getting increasingly better in recent years, it has made Panerai an easy target. As there was even some drama with the Panerai official Instagram allegedly reposting fakes from followers kind of sharing wrist shots. Also, there has been some other issues around the language of in-house and some of their movements, which hasn't really helped their cause, but this is a pervasive issue in watches in general, not just with them. And another thing I've noticed is the people that are so in love with this brand are also sometimes neglected by the brand itself. Given their rise, Panerai quickly became one of the most popular watch brands in the world. But with a quick rise, sometimes you feel the need to do everything for everybody. And with some of the actions that Panerai took, it seemed like they kind of got sucked into this a little bit. The desire to go up market, the adoption of trying to go in-house when that really wasn't a part of what they were really selling, and other styles of designs that don't really hold up in the water resistance department. But on the flip side, I think there's also some really compelling things that make Panerai such a unique brand. For one, their history is very cool. The backstory of dive watches and being at the forefront of the field for military use is just something that is fascinating. And this story seems to be a contributor to the meteoric rise that this brand went through throughout the 90s and 2000s. As a second point, kind of for the positives on Panerai, I think this is probably the biggest one they actually have a unique and recognizable design formula. As you look around at watches, and as I've just kind of become more involved in the industry and handle thousands of watches at this point, you start to see the overlap over and over again. And you also recognize that there are a lot of brands out there that don't have that one key model or just design DNA that they can call their own. Kind of how I see it, or how I would say maybe recognize this idea, is if you see a watch on somebody's wrist from across the room, and you could tell without looking at the dial, the name on the dial, what is the brand, that is so powerful. If you look at Panerai on somebody's wrist or in a blurry photo, you just know it's a Panerai. And that is just so powerful as you're looking at the market and what else is available. I would say they have one of the most recognizable silhouettes of any watchmaker out there, and that is incredibly rare. Maybe close would be something like a Patek Nautilus or an AP Royal Oak or the Rolex Oyster case. But from there, there's really not that many that are, I would say, as comparable as Panerai. When you see it, you know it. Another thing that is unique to Panerai from a positive end is they have one of the most passionate followings of consumers I've ever seen. When you have a whole community that's named after the brand known as the Paneristes, also seeing like an online blog and forum where people are very active. And I checked before shooting this video, people are still posting in this very dated, forum still to this day, which kind of blew my mind. This cult-like following, very few brands can actually rival. And this is such an asset and an opportunity. And if I'm Panerai, I'm doing whatever I can to show my appreciation to this group. Getting them involved in new designs, thinking about what the future is of the brand. This is your backbone. And hearing from another collector rather than a brand itself about why a brand is special is so powerful. And then for the final pro looking at Panerai, I think they still make a very cool watch. Although they're not for everyone, 
Panerai still manages to make a nice product. They're one of the most distinct sports watches you can find for the money, and they appeal to a certain wavelength that is not always addressed by brands. I think there's a huge opportunity to design new styles and try new things. If I'm them, I'm probably getting involved some of my most established collectors to see what they think so I can stay on the path, but there's definitely a lot of room to grow here, and I think that the core of the brand is cool. I get the detractors and why people don't like them as well, but this is such a unique instance, and I think is a great case study as you look at other watch brands out there and how when maybe something is hot right now, how things can quickly change and how a brand needs to adapt and think about themselves long term, especially as we increasingly see uh, this kind of appeal towards the timeless end of watches and their artistry. And I think Panerai is in that unique position and a really interesting brand to talk about. Would I personally own a Panerai? A lot of their watches certainly size me out. So there's only a select few that I could probably pull off for my own personal taste. Something from the Submersible Collection or a Luminor in say a 42 millimeter case would certainly interest me. And of course the Italian connection is very cool to me just given my background and uh, my family's history. But Panerai is in this very unique position. Most brands that fall on harder times or maybe aren't as popular as they once were, don't have as many things going for them as Panerai does. And with some strategic changes, I think the idea of this polarization around the brand could start to slowly diminish and it could just become more of an appreciation. That's why I kind of wanted to discuss this brand with this type of context in a video like this. But all right, guys, that is my video here on Panerai. I know this is kind of a long overdue video. I'd love to see some comments down below, get a conversation going. Like, what are your thoughts generally on Panerai? Uh, and just, do you agree with some of my points? Do you disagree? If you are an avid Panerai collector or Paneristi, I'd love to see those comments as well. Uh, that'd be very interesting to kind of talk about it. I just think they're in a very distinct position in the industry and are really unlike any other brand just given their background in the last 10 to 15 years and where they're currently residing. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Also check out teddybaldesar.com, full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, also offer a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. In addition, if you wanna stay up to date with the content, be sure to follow along on Instagram and see some great photos of watches as well in the process. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.